So I am here with Alice Gretchen from The Lion Game. Let's talk about your last name, because do people have a hard time pronouncing it? How many different ways has it been said wrong? Do people, uh, when I was a figure skater, the person who would announce the girls who would take the rink, you'd always be, Alice Greesheim, Gre 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 Alice. <laughs> so, and, or when I go to auditions on the Sunday show, Alice. I'm not even going to try. Like, so a lot of people just don't even try, but if they do, it's Greasin, Graxin, Gracian. Yes. No one ever gets it right. it's actually Gretchen, like Gretchen. the girl's name, right? Exactly. It's actually pretty simple. And I usually but. tell people if they think of Czechoslovakia, it sort of makes sense with the whole CZ yeah. is in CH sound. Did anybody, in, when you first got started in the business and showbiz, say to you, you got to change your last name? No, no one said I had to change it. But when um, I was in nursing school and when I told my grandparents I was going to move to L.A. and try to be an actress, they were pretty disappointed at first. They were like, oh, I don't know. And my grandfather, the one thing he told me was like, don't let them change your name. You are a Gretchen. <laughs> so that was all he had to say about the matter. And I was like, okay. Well, so you're and there were no other Alice Gretchens in the SAG registry, so I was yeah. I, was I wouldn't totally imagine that it. there would be. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> now, what made you want to become an, an actress? Because you were, when um, reading about you, you actually graduated early from high school and went to nursing yes. school? Well, I was homeschooled my whole life, and when I was 15, I started uh, at a community college and got my GED when I was 16. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I did modeling on the side in, in Denver. I, I moved here from Boulder, Colorado. And then through the modeling agency, a talent manager from LA was scouting for new talent and he met me and he was like, oh, you should come to LA for a pilot season. And I had no idea what he was talking about and I was so not interested. You're like, I don't know how to fly planes. Yeah, I, I did. That was the first thing I thought. I was like, pilot season. It just made no sense. And, um, and I told my parents, I was like, oh, this guy wants me to move to LA and be an actor. And they're like, oh, you should go, you should go. And I was just flabbergasted. And so, you know, my parents were really the ones that you, they viewed it as, you know, a, an open door. And they're like, oh, you'll always wonder the rest of your life, what if? So just take a semester off and go. And I saved up some grant money from school. And so that's what I did. And I fully intended to come back to school and finish and, you know, probably travel the world as a nurse. That's what, that's what was in, in my mind. But um, as soon as I moved here, I started booking pretty pretty frequently, like right away, and uh, I've been very fortunate. I haven't had to have a second job since I started acting, and so, which is very, you know, that's that's rare. You know, most of my friends have had to have another job at one point or another, but I've been working fairly steadily, and so I just kind of thought, oh, I guess this is maybe, maybe I should just keep going, you know, let's see how long this lasts for, and nine years later, I'm still here, still doing it, so it's good. It's, it's a really fun job, and I think I sort of, even though I never wanted to be an actress when I was a kid, I sort of fell in love with it along the way, because it's perfect for someone who doesn't know what they want to be when they grow up, because you get to be so many different mm -hmm. things and so many different characters. Will you ever go back to nursing, do you think? That's I've like thought about it. I've thought about it. Probably not in nursing school at this point, but yeah. um, if anything, it would probably be something more along the lines of massage therapy or physical therapy. Mm -hmm. um, more more one-on-one -on -one time, less monitoring time, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Uh, no, I, I love that, but I also love writing a lot. Like, I would say writing is my first passion, mm -hmm. and then everything else is like a close second I can't pick. Yeah. So let's talk about the lying game. Mm -hmm. um, Madge recently found out about the twins. Yes. And uh, how, <laughs> so how much long drama. will she be able to keep that secret? Um, you know, so far through the end of season one, she keeps it. So I have no idea what season two will look like. Uh, we were not even officially picked up for season two yet. So hopefully we'll find out pretty soon. Um, I think uh, Mads, as viewers, and you probably know, she started dating Ryan Harwell, the, the British kid at school. And it, it definitely starts training her, her thing with Ryan. They're, they're not officially in a relationship. It's a little bit confusing because the writers aren't sure themselves if they are. Some of them have told me, oh, yes, they're totally together. And then one of the producers is like, oh, no, 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 we have not established that yet. So, But whatever Mads and Ryan's thing is, it definitely becomes a strain that she can't share this with him because as Mads gets pulled more and more into helping Emma and her brother Thayer kind of unravel the truth about their father and trying to find the birth mom and, you know, there's so many secrets on the show, it's hard to keep them all straight. But mm -hmm. uh, as she gets involved with that, it takes her away from Ryan, and he's like, dude, what's going on, you know, and I can't really tell him, and, and so it's hard, and um, I think there's a line coming up in one of the next episodes mm -hmm. um, where I even tell Emma, like, I, I understand what you've been going through. It's really lonely keeping secrets, because um, it is. <laughs> does, she, does she have suspicions about her father and that will they continue to grow? 
I don't know. Uh, Mads, you mean? Yeah. Um, she definitely does have suspicions about her father, and as much as it's it's been very tricky to play because she she doesn't know. Like I we, I just watched the episode that aired last Monday. I watched it last night online, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so I feel like I can talk about it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's been very hard to do interviews before these episodes have aired. Yeah. Um, she now we sort of know that Alec, my, uh, Mads's dad, has been now a suspect for Derek's mur murder. Mm -hmm. And so as Mads and Thayer start learning more and more about their dad's possible involvement with that, Mads is as suspicious as she is defensive about him. And I think one of the reasons why she's so protective of her dad and so adamant that he couldn't is maybe because deep down she does suspect that he really is capable of such a horrible thing and really doesn't want to go there and believe it. And so. Um, at the end of the day, I think I made this choice after talking with a couple of the writers and producers about it. It's like, you know what, I really do need to believe that he's innocent. Otherwise, it's too, you know, she could deep down believe that he's guilty, but I think it's better if she just really believes that he's innocent. Because so, it's her dad. It's her dad, and also there is there is no evidence that he did it, no hard evidence that he did it, yeah. and it's just too easy. It would be too easy for him to have done it. So, well, we're that. coming up in a few weeks to the the season finale. So, are, are there going to be cliffhangers that happen of in that? Of course, <laughs> it yes. wouldn't be a good finale if there weren't. <laughs> um, yes, there will be some cliffhangers. There, I feel like there's so many storylines on the line game. Every storyline gets its own cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. um, with mine, hopefully, without giving too much away, it, it definitely has to do with my dad. Mm -hmm. And. Um, and you know, with all the stuff going on right now with Ethan and Emma and Sutton and Thayer, like Thayer, you know, you can start to see he's developing feelings for Emma, and then Ethan and, and Emma are sort of like they just found out they, that he cheated. But you know, he also cheated on Sutton with Emma, and so I haven't quite understood <laughs> fully why everyone is so shocked and upset that he could do it again. It's like he did it, I don't know. And she, he cheated on Emma, but she also took her sister's boyfriend. There's got to be something to be said for so that. So much drama. A pair of Sutton's an evil person. <laughs> like a, a boyfriend's a boyfriend. That's right. <laughs> but that should be the cis code instead of the bro code, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yes, there's there's lots of cliffhangers. And with the adult stuff, um, like with Ted and Kristen, the parents on on the show, there's, you know, their relationship is obviously getting pretty rocky, and so they have a cliffhanger there too. Five, ten years from now, where do you want to be? Um, I would love to be in the position to be able to pick and choose what jobs I would like to have instead of auditioning. I'd say that's the big, that's the most difficult part about being an actor is the yeah. driving around and auditioning. You have to go to Burbank, then Santa Monica, then you're back in Hollywood <laughs> all in one day. Yeah. Um, this is the first pilot season in a while that I've had off, yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm relishing it. Um, I could see my, I'd love to see myself in the position of just being able to read things and be like, oh, I really like this, but I like this too. Can I do them both? Um, I'd love to do that, and I'd also really love to uh, have more with my writing going on. I'm working on a cookbook memoir, and it's been, you know, since I've been working on The Lion Game, I haven't been able to devote as much time to What's it. What's a cookbook memoir? Um, food, food memoir. It's sort of a, a burgeoning genre in, like, it's like a cookbook meets a memoir. And so it's, it's a, uh, something along the lines of, like, Ruth Reichel, who was the editor of Gourmet, she has a few, I guess you could call them cookbook memoirs. Uh -huh. um, Comfort Me With Apples, I think, was my favorite of hers. And basically, it's sort of like an autobiography, but centered around where food is just as much of a central character as any other character in your life was. Mm -hmm. and, and just for fun, you can include the recipes. Like, I'd like to, you know, I, I'm working with um, an editor, and we'll see how... And of course, I'm sure the publishing house will have something to say about it. But I'd like to close each chapter with a recipe. And mm -hmm. um, when I was a kid, some of my favorite books were the Laurel Ingalls Wilder books. Mm -hmm. And when Farmer Boy is my favorite because she loves talking about what Almanzo's family ate. And I remember thinking, like, oh, I want the recipe for that. And then there actually is the Laurel Ingalls Wilder cookbook. And so it's like food and, and writing and travel. Those are three of my favorite things. And I think. Um, Anything I can do to incorporate all three is, is a dream come true for me. In the memoir, I started out doing it just for my family. We traveled a lot and ate a lot of different things. And, mm -hmm. and um, I started doing it just for them, just as a writing exercise and just for fun. And then I was like, actually, you know, maybe, maybe this could go somewhere. So.